Uh, I'm here because there is a conference, the Harvard India Conference. It's the 16th edition. And we're talking about the future prospects of India as a country and what all of us as stakeholders can contribute to it. Uh, the challenge of our times and what needs to be done, elections in, this, in India are, are only a few months away. And I think the obvious questions that people have in mind is that what will be the political narrative? Uh, how are the main political parties, including my own, the Congress party, will position itself? And uh, what we will do to make sure that people give us their faith and blessings. India is, I think, a country that is uh, set to go places. Um, we have differences of opinion uh, in different political parties in India, but as a nation, we stand united. Uh, more importantly, just two days ago, the attack in Pulwama, the uh, terror attack that we all witnessed, was absolutely um, a tragic incident which should not have happened. And those behind uh, that attack uh, will be dealt with. And we in the Congress party stand solidly behind the government of the day that it must do everything to revenge the death of 40 young men who were killed uh, barbarically for no reason. So this sort of attack uh, has never been seen uh, even in Kashmir. And, and I think what happened was something that uh, needs to be answered and answered very quickly. There is a sense of anger amongst every single Indian uh, in, in India and, and the world over. And there was no reason why 40 young men had to lose their lives. Uh, this sort of attack, uh, those who were behind this attack and those institutions, those countries, uh, those people who have helped such elements and need to be uh, given an answer in a very, very firm fashion. And for that, all of us will and have been remaining uh, united uh, on that front. Uh, there were five young men who were from my home state of Rajasthan uh, who died, young men in their 20s. Uh, I think their valor, the sacrifice will not go in vain. But people who try and disrupt uh, proceedings and attack uh, our, our soldiers and our police uh, will not go uh, unpunished. So you want to war with Pakistan? I said whoever is responsible ah, yes, must be taken to us. That's what we the have, government said. We, we think that people who are responsible, the government will take them to task and we stand behind the government. Uh, attacks like this will not deter us uh, from you know, uh, reaching our goal and aim of uh, developing Jammu and Kashmir and the rest of India. Uh, so this attack, the reports have said that jaish e Mohammed is perhaps behind this attack. Uh, I don't know what the Pakistan authorities are saying about this, but I, I can assure you that the the Indian state is strong enough to give a befitting reply. Sir, so, two months as deputy CM, how's two months? How's the past two months been taking the new position? They've been quite challenging, but I think we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, some of the promises that we made in our manifesto, we've already implemented. For example, the uh, economic allowances for the unemployed people in Rajasthan, farm loan waiver, in increasing the pension for uh, uh, elderly citizens, um, opening up of universities. Uh, some of the things that we said in a manifesto, we've already implemented, and elections of, to the Lok Sabha are not far away. Mm -hmm. So I think people are watching. And the steps we've taken to improve the state of our farmers, we've done in, in the first few weeks of our being in government, as opposed to the last BJP government that for four years and 11 months did nothing. Mm -hmm. In the last three weeks, they made some announcements of which we are having to uh, you know, uh, carry the burden of those announcements, but we're happy to do that. So two months have been quite, uh, uh, I think, successful to a large part. I think people have appreciated the steps that our government has taken and will continue to work uh, you know, relentlessly for the betterment of people of Rajasthan. And you spoke about, obviously, elections. And in my world, is looking at India right now and what's going to come up. So how is the Congress party preparing and what are your predictions? So we have already started our preparations mm -hmm. some time ago. Our manifesto committee has traveled to across different parts of India and heard people and you know hearing what their expectations what their aspirations are from the Congress party as opposed to the BJP which tells people what they should get we think people should tell us what they want from us uh, as a political party uh, so Mr. Rahul Gandhi has been leading from the front the last three state elections I think are uh, a quick uh, glimpse as to what the future of Indian polity will hold. Uh, our preparations at the booth level are already in place. We are harnessing technology to make sure that our communications and our interaction with our workers at the booth level is very, very robust and strong. Our leaders are traveling across the state, across the country. So we are fully prepared. I suspect the elections will be announced in March. The Congress party is fully prepared to take on that election and uh, come out triumphed. And uh, you mentioned Rahul Gandhi. Do you think he's ready to be Prime Minister? Well, I certainly think so. I think Mr. Gandhi has proven that uh, he can ask the tough questions, make the government of the day accountable, 
And I think when Mr. Gandhi asks Mr. Modi all these tough questions, whether it's for the Rafale deal uh, or other problems in his government, it gives a sense of energy not just to the Congress workers, but to all opposition parties across India. And uh, nationally, it is the Congress party that has the bandwidth and the strength to take on the BJP. Of course, regional parties have an important role to play. They will always continue to, to be important players, but at a pan-India level, it's the Congress party that can actually challenge and defeat the Bharti Janata Party. What are the regional parties that the Congress is going to ally with? We've already spoken to most of them. Mrs. Sonia Gandhi had a meeting last year, and 17 parties attended that meeting. And I think our, uh, our friends and coalition partners are going from strength to strength. I, I tend to call them UPA++. Uh, whereas the BJP is losing friends very quickly. I mentioned uh, AGP, Shiv Sena, uh, Mr. Kushwa's party in Bihar, um, uh, and many other parties are leaving the BJP for various reasons. But the Congress and the UPA, uh, our strength and our numbers are getting stronger and stronger by the day and by the week. And you will have a, a rainbow coalition that will defeat the NDA government in the Lok Sabha elections this summer. On the other side, you had your educator, like you completed your education in Pennsylvania. So, and you have seen the US system and everything. And what are the best practices you are going to implement there in your, in your, in your stage? So we have a manifesto, we will deliver on all our promises. I think the BJP stands exposed today as, as a party in power, they had much to deliver. For five years, we only heard promises, whether it's demortization as a, as a step or the GST, they've damaged the economy. Uh, so today, the challenges are much more than they were five years ago. And the leadership in New Delhi, I think, needs to really introspect on its performances. And instead of talking about religious and uh, em, you know, emotive issues, we have to focus on farmers, young people, and all the challenges that our society faces. So the BJP has to pay a price for its non-performance.